this is Mr. T with our third conic shape called ellipses. So let's get into it. Ellipses is a set of points where the sum of the distance between our two foci and a point on the ellipse are constant. So these distances change as the point moves around, but the sum of these two distances stays constant. If you remember on a circle we had a one point in the middle and a constant distance all the way around. There's a quick tutorial, a quick video that you can watch on my playlist that shows how to use simple tools of nails and strings where you can draw a, a simple ellipse. So you might want to take a look at that so that you get a good feeling of this definition of an ellipse. We have two standard equations for an ellipse. They're going to be similar, but it depends on whether the ellipse is horizontal or vertical. We decide horizontal or vertical by the width. So if it's wider in the horizontal direction, it's called a horizontal ellipse. And in the next one, we'll see it will be longer in this direction. It will be vertical. Our standard equation has an x squared and a y squared added together and they will the standard form will always equal 1 and we're going to have sometimes numbers under the x squared and the y squared referred to the letters here a and b uh, this standard form is for when our ellipse is centered at the origin if we take the square root of the number under x squared we get a and that distance for a horizontal ellipse since it's under the x is on the x-axis. So if we go a units to the right or a units to the, to the left we get to what are called the vertices. So there are two vertices. The axis here that has the uh, vertices is called the major axis. The letter under the y in this case is the b squared and its distance to things called covertices. They're on the y-axis, so there's two of them, b units this way and b units down. To find the foci, the two focus, we use the equation that relates a and b here called c squared equals a squared minus b squared. It looks a little bit like the Pythagorean theorem, but in this case we have a subtraction. And that makes sense because the uh, foci on an ellipse are inside the ellipse, so we would expect that this distance has to be less than a squared. Uh, sometimes we will use when we're writing it the total width of an ellipse is going to be 2 times a and the total height will be 2 times b. Let's look at this same template for vertical. So here we have, you can see the a and the b have changed. Now the way we know a and b for an ellipse, a is always the biggest number. So the bigger number if it's under y, it's vertical. If the bigger number is under B, it's going to be horizontal. The dimensions are the same. A is the di distance to the vertices, in this case on the y-axis since it's vert uh, vertical. B is our distance to our covertices. C, using the exact same formula as on the last slide, gets us to the focus of the two foci. And again, in this case, our height is 2 times A because we're going up and down for the height and right and left here we get 2b for the width. So let's go through some sample problems and apply this template. We'll start out by graphing. So in a minute we'll put this up, but we can tell on this problem that it's going to be a horizontal uh, ellipse because the bigger number is under the x squared. We also know it's an ellipse because we have two squared letters with a plus and a 1 over here. So let's go about how we find the foci in graphing this one. So I've rewritten the problem here. And again, as I said before, a squared is the biggest, so it's under the x, therefore it's horizontal. And to find a, we take the square root of that number, so a is going to be 10. If this is a, this must be b, so b is 6. We use our formula for c to calculate c. C gives us the distance to the foci, and since it's horizontal, we are going on the x-axis to get the two foci. So we were asked to write the coordinates of the foci, so that's here. 
Now to graph it, I would start with the center and plot my vertices. And since it's horizontal, I went 10 units to the right, 10 units to the left. And then we go B units to get to the co-vertices, 6 units up, 6 units down. And that can give us the outline of our ellipse. We just sketch in the shape. And I also plotted on here the foci. Remember, if I pick a point here, the distance between these two foci is the same if I add those together of any other point on the ellipse. Our second problem is not in standard form. It's not equal to 1 over here. So we have to divide both sides of the equation by 9. And on this side we have to divide all the terms by 9. We can simplify this fraction here and we get 1 -third. Here we have 1 -ninth. So now our bigger number is under y squared. So this is a vertical ellipse and a is going to be the square root of 9. This is b to find our b squared. To find b we have to take the square root of it so we get radical 3 which is approximately 1.7. Since we're vertical to get to the foci well first we calculate c using our formula and then to get to the foci we're going to go up and down. Again to sketch the graphs we are going A units up and A units down since it's vertical, B units to get to the co-vertices, and I showed the plotting of the foci. That was sketching graphs. Now let's go the other way. Let's write equations. We're going to do it for two kinds of problems. First where we're given verbal information or written information, and lastly we'll graph it when we're, or we'll write the equation when we're given the graph. We have to figure out A and B to write the equation of an ellipse. If we're given C, again, we'll use this formula. So if we look at this first problem here, now we need to decide is it vertical or horizontal. Since the height, which is up and down, is longer than the width, that means this is a vertical one. And if you remember from the information, 2 times A is our height, so our A is going to be 25 and our B is half of this which is 20 so let's look at that problem so here I've we've talked about this already we can use our formula to calculate C so that we can find where our foci would be to write the and I sketched a graph here of what it would look like and uh, to write the equation since it's vertical we put the a squared under the y so 25 squared is 625 it goes under the y squared the b squared goes under the x squared, and it's always equal to 1. Let's look at the next example, number 2. We're given a vertex. Remember the coordinate of the vertex from the template, this is a, so a is going to be plus or minus 4, and covertices give us the b, so the 3 is the b. And if we sketched a graph, the, our vertices are on the x-axis, so that means this is a horizontal parabola, so we will be putting the a squared under the x and the b squared under the y. Also, if we wanted to find where to uh, draw the foci, we would calculate c using our formula. And down here was the equation which we were asked to find. So again, x squared over a squared, negative 4 squared is 16, and 3 squared is 9. Finally, our last example on this page we're given a focus and a covertices. Foci, our focus, give us C. So we know C is 4, B for covertices is negative 2, and we have to figure out A. We can use our formula that relates A, B, and C, plug in our information that we're given, and solve that for A. So we add 4, and then we take the square root, so we get A is approximately 4.5, or it's the square root of 20. We didn't really need to take the square root here unless we're sketching a graph because what goes in our equation is a squared. And again on this one, our foci is on the y-axis. The foci and the vertices are on the major axis, so our major axis is up and down here, so this is a vertical uh, ellipse, so our a squared, which is 20, goes under the y squared, and the b squared, uh, which is our two, negative 2 squared, goes under here, under the x squared. So this is our answer for that third one. 
Lastly, let's kind of do the same thing. Let's write equations given the graphs. Now from the graphs we see here this is a vertice. So we have the two vertices and we can tell the distance to the vertices is 3. That's going to be our A. These are our two co-vertices and those distances too. So we know A and B and it's horizontal so we're going to be able to plug into our equation here. So as I said from the reading the graph we got this information just plug into our template. On this one our vertices were up and down so we have four units for A that goes under the Y since we're vertical and B to the co-vertices. So it's really pretty easy to write the equation of ellipse especially when it's centered at the origin. Okay that's the end of our unit on ellipses. I hope that helps you and as you work your own practice problems. I hope you have great luck. Oops, I forgot I had added a slide here. So let's talk about this. Okay, this equation is in the template of an ellipse. Is there anything that you see about this that's different than we've done and what might that imply? If we look here, our a squared and b squared are the same. So what might that mean? Can we decide if it's horizontal or vertical? Not really, but uh, if our distance to our co-vertices and distance to the vertices is the same, what shape might we have? And if you kind of sketch a graph of that, you might realize that we've got a circle. So since it's a circle, we need to put it in the standard form of a circle which has x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. We're not allowed to have these divisors so what can we do to this equation to put it in the form of a circle? Since both these denominators are 16 if we multiply both sides of the equation by 16 on this side the 16's are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with the equation that we have here. So special form of an ellipse is a circle so circles and ellipses are uh, closely related. Now I think we're at the end of the tutorial. I hope when I press my next button we'll find that we're at the end and again I wish you luck.